Meg. How you doing, Coach? I'm doing well, Steve. Scrambling a little bit, but uh, but excited about the opportunity and, and excited to get out and coach these guys tomorrow. All right. Well, let's talk about the timeline here. Um, Obviously, you know, there were there was discussions about, you know, Barney's health a while ago and then it came down a couple of weeks ago. So for you, what's been the timetable? Because obviously this is a well, I don't know, you tell me, is it a massive change in terms of our responsibilities? Yeah, you know what, it's it's a massive change as far as my responsibilities are concerned. Uh the biggest thing we're trying to do is keep a lot of continuity for the players, just timetable wise. I mean, of course, as an offense coordinator as a person who has to call the plays and who has to be in charge, you have to put your spin on it, you have to call it the way you see comfortable but it's not fair to the kids to overhaul what you're doing because for all the kids know they show up a week before camp and it's like hey this is your new offensive coordinator so that's not fair to them uh in a lot of ways will be the same and a lot of terminology ways will be the same but there'll definitely be a new flair and new spins because i have certain philosophies and beliefs and and things i think we can get to 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 make us better tell people what you were doing what was your uh, main responsibilities I was the O line coach. I was the O line coach, run game coordinator. Um, so, so it's it's kind of a, a, a unique situation because usually an offensive line coach is not also the offensive coordinator, just because both jobs have such a heavy load that they carry. But again, timing wise, it's hard to go make me the tight ends coach and then replace place myself with an O line coach. So, for continuity purposes, I will be carrying both of those right now. You are. So what yes, does that sir. mean for you in terms of being in touch with the O-line? Because, you know, I'm sitting there on the sidelines last year, and, I mean, you, you're heavily involved. You know, every time the guys come to the sidelines, you guys are going over stuff now. So what do you do? What do you do now with the O-line? Well, I mean, I was, I was very fortunate when I was a younger coach. I worked for Coach Bobby Bowden as a graduate assistant, and he was a guy that allowed his coaches to coach. And, I mean, the way I look at, at our situation offensively is, I'm still equal to all the other offensive coaches. So I've got to allow those guys to do their jobs. I've got to allow Ron O'Dell to coach Armani Rogers. I've got to allow Cedric Cormier to coach the wide receivers. And, and I've got to give myself myself as the offensive line coach. So I've got to – I mean, yes, I will be taking away some. And, yes, there will be more discussions as far as what we get to. But I'm also giving our offense a disservice if I don't continue to coach those guys like they deserve to be coached. Talking to UNLV offensive coordinator Garen Justice and – Coach, you mentioned Bobby Bowden. You also worked with Rich Rodriguez, with Lane Kiffin, and you mentioned having some ideas of your own philosophy. How do you think those will show up in UNLV's offense this year? Well, people are going to have to just wait and see that. Um, <laughs> you really don't want to give a lot of those away. Um, we're basically going to look the same in a lot of ways. It's just probably the, the details or the changes that will occur may not even be noticeable to the normal fan's eye. So your own experience as an offensive lineman, and you just talked about it. It was one of the questions I had teed up to ask you. You're an All-American lineman at West Virginia. You've seen this game played at a high level, but you just said an offensive line coach is generally not the offensive coordinator. Beyond the load, what do you think that means in terms of philosophy, bringing the philosophy of an offensive line coach to the offensive coordinator position? Yeah, I think the good news is, I mean, usually when you look at offense coordinators, they're quarterback coach based, and and it's and they should be because the quarterback everything runs through the quarterback. But if you're looking beyond that, the next most important position as far as hierarchy would probably be your offensive line and your offensive line coach. So the good news that we have is is my mind and my brain is is wired to think about five of the people on the offense. So I think in a lot of ways. We can we can simplify some things to allow the five most guys who have to work together to be more on the same page and, and really coach the lowest common denominator as far as that. So that's that's kind of my my main thought and my main approach going into this. Uh, the biggest thing too, I have to take a step back and be humble. I can't I can't go into this and expect that I'm going to be a quarterback guru tomorrow because I'm not. Um, I've got to trust those guys and, and really rely on their opinions and their thoughts, and, and I feel really, really good about where we're at right now as an offensive staff doing that. And we don't want to make it sound like offensive line is the only thing you've coached before. You have head coaching experience, and in that time, you balanced working with the offensive line and being a head coach. How were you able to do that in the past? I coached the offensive line. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, <laughs> that's really what I did. Um, and it goes back to trusting my coaches to do their jobs. So at that time, I did have an offensive coordinator, and yeah, I had a very, very heavy input and thought, and it looked the way I wanted it to look. 
but I also knew that I wanted to help make the decisions on what do we do if it's four and two, fourth and two, do we go for it, or what's the right guard doing on a certain protection against this three technique? So managing head coach, offensive coordinator, and O-line coach was a little too much. I think the good news with my experience as being a head coach and having that heavier role, it has somewhat prepared me for my new role now. Speaking with Garrett Justice, the UNLV offensive coordinator here on Cofield and Company. Of course, you're stepping in for Barney Cotton, who's had a heck of a lot of success over the last few years, especially in the running game with the UNLV offense. What have you taken from him, and, and how much are you still in contact with him now? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're all we're all as a staff still in contact with him. Uh, I mean, he's very, very much a part of, of what's going on here. He's very, very, very much has his fingerprints all over this program, and uh, that goes from the whole program, not just the offense. And uh, Barney's a guy that that we're we're going to keep in touch with throughout the whole year and, and make sure that that we were we rely on his past experiences and, and and what he's accomplished. So let's go position by position. We talked to you know a good amount of offensive line. So let's start at uh, the glamour skill position and that is quarterback. And you talked about Ron Odell, the quarterback coach, and Armani Rogers. What do you need to see? What do you want to see from Armani here over the next uh, thirty days or so as you get ready for the August thirty first opener? Yeah, the the biggest thing we we've got to do systematically is we've got to find ways to keep him healthy. Uh, I mean, if you look back the last two seasons, last year I was part of the program. The year before that, I was not here. But a common denominator, a common thread amongst UNLV was if Armani Rogers is healthy all twelve games, it greatly increases their chances of making a bowl game. So I think first and foremost we have to keep the big picture of keeping a great player like Armani upright, healthy, doing some things. To protect him, yes, Armani's going to run. Yes, Armani's going to do those things, but he's also going to be smart as, as far as his approach, and we've got to be smart as coaches as far as our approach of, of protecting him and making sure that we can keep him healthy for all 12 games. And obviously the backup position has become really important now as well with uh, Max Gillum down for a while. Yeah, it has, and, and the good thing, we, we feel like we were really deep in that room, and, and Kenny Noblad's a guy that when you look at it, Max, I mean, the unfortunate thing about last year was with Armani going down was Max got to play a lot of football, and he's an older guy that that has a lot of reps under his belt. So I'm kind of, I'm I'm an optimist to the extreme. I'm kind of looking at this thing and saying, well, Kenyon was a guy who was who was juggling. Was he a two? Was he a three? Him and Max were kind of splitting those reps. He's probably not getting developed quite the way we want to develop him. Well, now with Max out of the picture that really opens up the door to really see what Kenyon can do. And, and I know Kenyon's skill set is, is really, really fun to watch from uh, his quick release, from his accuracy, the way he can throw the ball. Um, I mean, he had, had a very, very successful high school career, and I think he will eventually be the guy here and have a very good career. If Max is out the first three games, do you have to coordinate the offense differently uh, with a you know, less experienced backup in there? Yeah, I, th- I, think, I think both guys, I mean, really Max, Max's game was different than Armani's. I think Kenyon's game is different. Than from, uh, all three guys are a little unique as far as what they can do. Uh, Max is more of a, a cerebral, heady, quick release, good decision maker. Kenyon can really throw the ball down the field, and, and Armani's your true dual threat guy. So I think going into any game, you have to have in mind what what your strengths and weaknesses are, not just at the quarterback position, but that's throughout. Yeah, and what I meant specifically was with Armani, do you have to worry about protecting Armani more on those first three games? Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. We uh, we have to look out for him, and and that's the whole year because and and, and Kenyon and, and Max would tell you, I mean, firsthand, Armani's Armani's a workhorse in a lot of ways, and and a lot of taking care of him is is just coaching him on how to take care of himself. It's Garen Justice, new offensive coordinator, moving over from the offensive line, although going to still be working with the offensive line, the OC for UNLV. So. Armani, you know, Armani takes off. I mean, he's a scary weapon for the defense to stop. But uh, I would think that one of the things you'd love to avoid is having Armani have to go on, you know, third and two, fourth and one, you know, those short yarded situations. I'm guessing that you, that you guys believe you have some candidates in the running back core to handle the short guarded stuff and the, the banging and bruising inside, but that's to be seen, right? It is to be seen. Other than Charles Williams, Charles Williams has, has proven that he can he can string together some carries and, and do some stuff. But other than that, it's really an unproven room. And I think after Chuck, 
you're looking at Chad Magyar, who had a, an excellent spring. A junior college transfer, Darren Williams, who's coming in, who's a guy that we're expecting a lot of high things from. Um, so I think those three guys, when you're, when you're talking to running back room, those would be the three that that probably are going to get the bulk of the workload. The thing about Magyar, Magyar is a guy that we view as a true mismatch guy. He's a guy that could play some fullback, could play a little wing type H back tight end. He could be your every down tail back. So he's a guy that you're looking at scheme and, and being multiple and, and really giving defenses fits as far as personnel grouping. He's a guy that we really need to develop mentally just because we're going to ask a lot from him. Who are you know targeting right now? Who are your main guys at wide receiver and especially with the fact that Presley went down with a torn ACL? Yeah, I think it starts with Darren Woods. He's the most experienced guy in the room. Uh, Darren's a guy who, who is kind of the heart and soul, really, of the offense when you look at it. I mean, he's lives right in.